Hi, and welcome to another Facebook Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. And I have a very special guest with me because uh, close to my heart, because she, like me, is an athlete. I was a swimmer in high school and college uh, and uh, is also in, well, not also, I'm not <laughs> a medical professional, but she is. Uh, but uh, fascinated with the research, the science, and plant-based nutrition. Um, so uh, let me uh, pull up this information here. So uh, Heather Shankman, MD, FACC, is an interventional cardiologist, and I'll let her explain what that is. Uh, she has a practice in California. She is the author of The Vegan Heart Doctor's Guide to Reversing Heart Disease, Losing Weight, and Reclaiming Your Life. Uh, Heather is skilled at uh, performing invasive procedures like opening up blocked arteries in the heart, but she is also a strong advocate for a healthy lifestyle, including a plant-based eating and regular exercise. She's also an avid athlete herself, uh, having competed in two Ironman triathlons and over a hundred endurance events. So Dr. Mother, author, athlete, interviews. So what do you do with all that spare time you have? <laughs> especially uh, well, especially with, during COVID, right? Yeah. Well, spend time with my family, particularly my daughter who just turned 18 months old and watching her grow up is, it's just, it's neat. That's beautiful. Is she starting out on a plant-based diet? She is. Yeah. She eats what I eat. So yes. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. So let's, let's start with the beginning. What is the sequence of events from athlete to med school, then to vegan? And tell, tell me about that sequence and what kind of led into each. Okay. Got it. So I can't recall in my life wanting to be anything other than a doctor and led me to medical school and led me to a combined degree program so that in the course of six years, I earned my bachelor's and my MD. And I actually, at age 23, had my MD and started residency. Um, in my internal medicine residency, I discovered that I found cardiology interesting. I, I was a lacto vegetarian at the time. I wasn't, I wasn't a vegan or plant-based and my diet certainly wasn't the best. Um, you know, I'd walk around on call carrying a 20 ounce bottle of, of Coca-Cola in one of my lab pockets to keep me awake at night. Um, but I, I found that cardiology was interesting and I felt like it was an area where I could make an impact on people's lives. There was so much good science to back up the things that we did and something as simple as you know, taking a patient emergently for a procedure to open a blocked artery can have such a huge impact and, and save a life and save heart muscle. It was in the course of my cardiology fellowship tra training that I became more interested in plant-based diets. I learned a little bit more about Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn and Dr. Dean Ornish and their work that they've done to suggest that a plant-based diet can be beneficial for the heart and can even reverse heart disease. Um, and also my passion for animals. Um, I will be the first to admit that I was vegetarian for the animals. I am vegan for the animals, but I was able to see that my passion for caring for animals and then if you eat plant-based, how beneficial it can be for your, your health. And so about 16 years ago, I embarked upon a vegan plant-based diet. And I think some, some point shortly thereafter, I signed up for my first triathlons. So all of my endurance training as an adult has been done on a plant-based diet. And through hard work over the years, I finished an iron two different Ironman races. I did Ironman Lake Placid in 2010. I did Ironman Boulder in 2015. And even as I got five years older, I improved my time from one Ironman to the next by over over an hour, which was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> being plant-based as an endurance athlete, I always felt like was an advantage because I always felt like I recovered faster than my teammates, for example, three days after Ironman Boulder, I was swimming laps in the pool, whereas other teammates of mine were just achy and could barely move and didn't want to get off the couch. 
That, that's amazing. Now, in you're 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 working as a doctor for a center at this point, probably, right? Right. I was working for a managed care organization at the time. Yes. Okay. So, how was that being a plant-based or vegan uh, and an athlete amongst that community that was not really accepting of that idea that uh, that it was that was the healthy way to go back then? Is that, is that what your experience was? Well, what's interesting is. I started working for the organization that I, I worked at um, in 2009 and plant-based diets were starting to catch on. They were still a little bit thought of as being woo and out there. Um, I think what made the made plant-based diets more mainstream for health was for the, the movie Forks Over Knives. And that I believe came out around 2011. Um, and as the idea of a plant-based diet being healthy caught on more, I think my my company really didn't push me away from advocating for it because if my patients stayed healthy, it saved my company money because it kept my patients out of the hospital. So they never had any trouble with me advocating for, for a plant-based diet. And on my own as a solo cardiologist in practice, I can do that even more. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm curious just as to your experience because um, in in your education how how much has the research changed the information that we now know how different it was I mean one of the beefs that I had with my college professors is that I would ch challenge them about new research that is out long before the texts were even created and oftentimes totally contradicting um, what was in the text yet I was graded by my, my ability to regurgitate what was in the text. So I got in trouble often during my college years for <laughs> challenging my professors with new data. And you know, did you ever come up against that kind of experience? I know um, uh, Dr. Uh, McDowell, uh, McDonald. Oh, God, Mc, Mc, oh, gosh. McDougall? <laughs> McDougal, thank you. Um, uh, uh, had had I listened to an interview of him and him almost failing out of college uh, at certain times because of that, uh, because he was uh, so strongly opinionated about some of the newer research that was coming out and and had a tough time with it. Did you ever experience that, or was is that something that uh, ever led you to uh, challenge the the research or the texts that you were learning? And and how did that change over time too? Right. Well, one thing I can tell you that I did challenge is in medical school, there actually were animal dissection labs that I found you know, absolutely horrifically wrong. I mean, there was like a, for anatomy, there was like this live pig lab um, where we were to you know, do all these various things to see how the pig would physiologically respond. And then ultimately the pig was killed. This was my first year of medical school. And I actually organized seven of us from my class to write a letter to the professor saying that we were opting out of this. We think this is wrong. And we provided them, we provided the professor with some information as to more modern, more humane ways of learning the same information and perhaps even learning it better. Um, there was also a, a live animal lab that took place during my, my fourth year of medical school, my emergency medicine rotation. And I, I opted I opted out of that as as well and made the point that this is not right to do this to animals for, for our learning. We don't need this to learn. And fortunately, as time has gone on, um, animal vivisection and dissection in medical schools has become less and less and less and much of that thanks to Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine and for newer ways of, of teaching. I know you were looking for more of an answer along the lines of me you know, butting heads with, with professors regarding nutrition, but honestly, nutrition really wasn't covered in medical school very much, so that opportunity didn't really come up. And that's kind of almost a sad statement in itself. Right. <laughs> that that part alone that uh, the requirements for nutrition are little to none practically for someone that we're investing our health in um 
and, and not giving us. So let's, that's a great segue to go right into um, interventional cardiology. So let's, or preventional medicine. So let's talk about that. What led you into that more specifically um, and, and just take it from there? Sure. Well, my um, board certification is in general cardiology and in interventional cardiology. The field of interventional cardiology deals in invasive procedures um, towards benefiting heart health, um, whether it be opening up a blocked artery or using catheters to measure pressures within the heart and the lungs, or potentially even replacing a heart valve through um, with, with catheters without having to cut the chest open. It's, it's really an, an evolving field and it, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, I became interested during my cardiology training. When I first started training in cardiology, I thought I'd want to be somebody who spent most of the time in the clinic and you know, reading imaging tests. But as I saw interventional procedures and participated, I, I just loved it. I mean, there's, there's a certain amount of adrenaline that comes with taking a person who is really, really sick and getting in and opening their blocked artery or putting in a device that will help to support their body and, and literally saving their life like that it's such a cool feeling when you and your team are successful at doing something like, like that um and, and i love procedures so it seemed like a good fit for me um a little bit ironic though because i'm also somebody who has a preventive bend and i very much am passionate about doing things with lifestyle to reduce the risk of ending up needing a procedure from me. Um, so, you know, diet and exercise and managing stress, these are all very, very important things. Um, but I, I try to combine those passions and it, it works. For example, I will take a patient who just had a heart attack and after the procedure, I I talk to him or her and say, look, you know, you had a heart attack. I just opened this blocked artery. I might even show them the pictures because I can. And they'll say, wow, that's neat. So what do I do now? And even lying there after the procedure, I'll say, okay, well, have you ever heard of a plant-based diet? And more and more, the answer these days is yes. You know, my, my wife is on a plant-based diet. My daughter is a vegan. I say, okay, well, that's the type of diet that I am advocating for your heart health going forward. Can we try that here in the hospital? Yeah, sure. So I put them on a plant-based diet in the hospital. They learn about it there. They go home. They start following a plant-based diet and do very well. That's, that's exciting. I mean, you're, you're, I mean, there's clearly now we know, especially with doctors like T. Colin Campbell and and Ornish and Esselstein, like you've talked about, that are showing the reversing of heart uh, disease, uh, cardiovascular um, disease, and, and and coronary heart disease, both through intervention or, or um, uh, through uh, preventional uh, modalities of changing uh, diet and lifestyle. So you know, how, how does, how do you feel being on both sides of that equation, seeing the cause and the effect? Um, mm -hmm. How do you bring that together for, for the, the client, the patient? Um, I try to meet them where they're at. Mm -hmm. So I know the majority of my patients aren't coming in wanting to go on a plant-based diet. Oh, some of them may read in the waiting room that I've got this vegan heart doctor's mm -hmm guidebook come in blindly, I try to meet my patients where they're at. And I'm not honestly telling all my patients, I want you to go vegan tomorrow because it's just not a way to reach people. I try to start where people are at and recognizing that most people who have heart issues that have been acquired through lifestyle, which is the majority of heart issues can benefit from lifestyle change and lifestyle change. I truly believe comes one step at a time for most people. There are some people who will do like a 180 um from one day to the next and they'll do great that way but most most of us aren't wired that way so i might talk to a patient who whose diet is like like fried meat and rice and that just happens to culturally be what his diet is and i'll say okay do you eat any vegetables mm, not really say, okay well i want you to add vegetables into your diet my goal for you is i want you to eat a vegetable every day 
can be a salad. It doesn't matter any vegetable. And that can be a starting point for someone. And that can definitely be a starting point that will move somebody in a healthier direction. I think when um, I work with uh, people too, just on a coaching basis too, and helping them, um, when they feel different, when they get results that they can experience, it does get them excited by like, okay, this is really working for me. I like it. What's next? What more can I do? And, and I think that can be an exciting right. path if you get people feeling the change, feeling the difference, um, or maybe even in your case, actually showing them the difference. If you show them um, you know, pictures of their arteries opening up, um, that can be very inspiring, especially for those who, like in this case, have come close to nearly dying, um, nearly losing family members, uh, especially um, when they're close family members, um, what a wake up call that can be for people to change. Um, although I, I do know that even though people can make dramatic changes, look, I had a, a very uh, amazing emotional experience in, in which I became vegan in one day, completely vegan, just eliminated all animal products in one day. That's not the typical path. And that for me, that was 30, 36 years ago. So um, it wasn't even, it was less typical back then. <laughs> uh, but I think it can be done and, um, and uh, it, it can be offered to people as a radical change because look, a heart attack, opening somebody's chest up <laughs> and pulling clots out of their artery uh, is, is, a, is a pretty dramatic um, situation, one that we didn't even have available to us, uh, um, you know, a little over 100 years ago. So, um, you know, this, I, I, these, are, these are radical times. And, and, um, but I'm wondering if you feel that people will make changes initially because of their uh, infarction or their heart attacks or whatever, and and then slide back into normal behaviors and you'll see them right back on the surgery table. That happens as well. And that is why it's my job as their cardiologist to make sure that they follow up with me on a regular basis so that I can keep them grounded and remind them that, yes, you feel great, but you had a heart attack or you have coronary disease and we need to do the things to keep you keep you healthy and keep this from happening again. Or, or keep them alive and <laughs> at the very least. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's let's move over to your book. So your book touches on it's it's a long title, <laughs> but it's appropriate to I, I believe what you have in it. Uh, obviously, reversing heart disease is a big part of it because if you're uh, if you're not alive, you you don't get to you do any of the rest of the things. But losing weight and how that ties into heart disease and and the last part I really like, which is reclaiming your life where we can make lifestyle changes that do reclaim our life, literally. It re-empowers us to be back in control um, by choosing different diet and, and exercise that can change the outcomes of our health and our experience of health. Agreed, absolutely, yes. So um, talk about uh, what's in your book and, and uh, you know, what inspired you to write this book and bring this material forward? Great. So the reason I wrote this book is I wanted to be able to put together, in my own words, what my advice would be to somebody who's concerned about their heart. Um, the book is really broken up into three parts. The first part is what is heart disease? Because I think you need to understand the basics of what's an artery, what's a vein, what does the heart do? What is high blood pressure? So I talk about those types of things. And then I talk about exercise and then I talk about diet. And with both of those sections about diet and exercise, I talk about what is ideal and how does one make those changes? And then at the end, talk about putting it all together. That's awesome. And and I think it really ties in together. You know, I was just um, reading an interesting study that uh, looked at sleep on insulin levels and um, just a single bad night of sleep can increase insulin insensitivity by up to 30 percent. 
I mean, that was a huge effect that, you know, a lot of people are dealing with all the time, but don't realize what a negative impact that can have on their life and their health. Um, something so simple. And, and that's why I think, you know, um, preventional medicine and overall lifestyle healthcare is so important right now because people don't realize what a huge impact it can have. Right, absolutely. Um, I noticed that there are patients who are looking for shortcuts and, you know, I think there, there are reasonable supplements to take, but there are some patients who will look for every possible supplement out there and will come in with like this huge bag of, of supplements, some which may be helpful, others which may be neutral, some may actually be harmful, but they won't do the basic things of eating a healthy diet and moving and exercising, which are so much more potent than any pill that you can take. Indeed, and, and obviously when we listen to the drugs that are being prescribed out there and the long list of ill health effects uh, and side effects that come with the drugs on every commercial we're uh, inflicted with <laughs> on television these days, we can see that uh, uh, the, the damaging effects from a lot of the prescriptions out there are even more harmful than um, the relatively uh, harmless effects in comparison of, of supplementation. Um, so how is that challenging for you being a doctor? I know the Standard of Care Act requires you by law to, uh, to prescribe uh, drugs in certain situations. How do you, how do you deal with that? Um, there's no law that mandates that I prescribe anything. Um, I prescribe based on you know, my, my medical judgment. And I believe you know, in evidence-based medicine and evidence-based medicine supports that there are certain medications that we know will help to prolong life, reverse plaque in the arteries and do beneficial things for people and prevent, for example, also prevent stroke. So whenever I put a patient on medication, I'm, I'm very thoughtful about it. And I will, I will explain to my patient why it is that I'm putting them on a medicine. Like I'm not going to give them a prescription for a statin and say bye bye. Um, you know, I will sit down and say I'm prescribing this statin for you, and here is why. Um, it may be for what we call primary prevention, which is to prevent a heart attack from happening in the first place. And the data on what we call um, this primary prevention if you've never had a heart attack or stroke, the data is not as strong, but there is evidence that it can help to reduce your risk if your risk initially is, is high enough. But it's very clear that in certain populations, like people who have had stents in the arteries, who've had a heart attack or a stroke, who have disease of the arteries, like there's very strong data that a statin will help to prolong life and reduce risk of events. Great. Well, um, let's talk about your uh, your experience of uh, over a hundred endurance events and and how you um, how your diet changed and and how your the impact of your dietary choices affected your performance. Sure, and all of that stuff I did on a plant based diet um, or a vegan diet. Not necessarily the healthiest at the beginning, but I think as as I evolved as an athlete, I feel like my my diet became more whole and plant-based and i felt like the cleaner i ate the the better my performance was the better my recovery was um you know i never felt like i had to supplement with a whole bunch of protein i think after sometimes if, if i had a really hard workout i might have a little bit of like a like a protein shake that i'd, that I'd make myself with my my vitamix blender at home but for the most part, I used healthy, healthy foods to help me to recover. Uh, that's awesome. And I think a lot of athletes are starting to see that, especially professional athletes whose monetary <laughs> earnings depend on their recovery level. Um, fighters recovering so much faster. You're seeing within the MMA field, plant based is booming right now because they realize they can recover faster. And if they can recover faster, they can have another fight sooner, which makes them more money. So uh, athletes that right. are power lifters or distance runners, the recovery is key for them to get back in the game. So I love that fact yeah. that, that, that plants with the polyphenols, with the antioxidants, with the alkalinity, with all of these factors can help 
Um, e even the, the fiber increasing um, microbiome digestion and butyrate production, the short chain fatty acids causing l uh, reduced inflammation and reduced tissue damage. I mean, there's so many beautiful things about the plant-based diet that we're, we're learning now, especially through the microbiome and short chain fatty acids that are so exciting. Absolutely, yes. So, well, it's been, uh, for people who are considering maybe going into the medical field themselves and that may be plant-based as well, um, what advice, what did you learn? What, if, what are the things that you could take away or give as advice to people who might be following in the footsteps, same footsteps? Sure. One thing that I have noticed as, as I've gone along is that plant-based diets have really caught on. I remember when I gave my first Grand Rounds talk in 2009 on plant-based diets, and I was talking to an audience of mostly gray-haired men, and I thought I was going to have like tomatoes thrown at me by these folks who th didn't know what a plant-based diet was and how, what do you mean you're, you want me to not eat meat? But I think that people, if you prevent, if you present them with the data and you present them with, with the benefits of a plant-based diet and that, you know, this is something that people can do. Um, I think people become open to it in the course of my time practicing here in the San Fernando Valley of, of California, um, for the past, past 13 years or so, I can think of about four or five cardiologists who over that time have become plant-based um, as they've learned more. And some of them, you know, I spoke with and kind of squeaked the wheel a little bit to get them there. So just keep in mind that when you're talking to people, they are willing to learn, especially physicians. That's what we do. We, we learn and they're, and people are open to change and a and changing what they think of nutrition. That's awesome. Thank you for that. And I think there's a lot of people who are fascinated by, um, you know, for me, uh, <clears throat> as a biopsych uh, major in college, I was looking at more how the total body physiology affected mood behavior instead of just neurochemistry. And I was fascinated to see all the different body chemicals. I mean, we now know the, the vagus nerve and, and how it's directly linked from the gut to the brain, uh, how microbiome is a producer, not only of the majority of our, uh, or the gut health and how it's, you know, influences uh, immune health, which is for the whole body, but also even neurochemistry down to the production of serotonin, where the majority of that is produced. You know, it's just like, it's interesting to see the whole physiology tie in and what an amazing, incredible piece of machinery uh, this is uh, that we have, that we're born into, um, if we just introduce the right <laughs> materials into it. Uh, just like right. a car, it runs really well when you put the right fuel in it. You put uh, grade A oil, you know, grade B oil in a gas tank and it's, it's gonna clog up. And we see that similar thing happening within human physiology. Indeed, absolutely. Well, such a pleasure having you on. Uh, thank you uh, for all you do uh, to promote plant-based health and nutrition and uh, and for saving lives. Um, anything else you want to leave? Jeff, thank uh, you much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. What about uh, for people who can uh, want to follow you or connect with you? Um, you want to tell about your links and uh, where they can reach you? Yeah, absolutely. Um yeah, my my website for my practice, it also has information about my book. It's www.drheathershankman, drheathershankman.com. Um, I believe you can also get there by typing into your URL, into your web browser, veganheartsdoc.com, all one word. Um, my book, The Vegan Heart Doctor's Guide to Reversing Heart Disease, Losing Weight, and Reclaiming Your Life is available on Amazon. And if you type in Heather Shankman, Amazon into your web browser search engine, it'll come up. Um, my office is in Tarzana, California, and I am seeing new patients. I not only see patients in person, but I am also, as the pandemic goes, I am seeing patients via telemedicine. So if you have heart concerns, I would be more than glad to um, consult with you. 
That's awesome. And I will include those links in the, in the bottom. So uh, if you're watching this at a later time, you'll be able to uh, just click on the links and you can follow Dr. Shankman in all those different ways. Right. I should also add, I, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Um, both handles are at veganheartdoc. Veganheartdoc. Awesome. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming on and thank you for what you're doing for both the community uh, the vegan community and the medical community and uh, really raising the bar in um, in helping people save lives. Jeff, thanks so much for having me. This was fun. Thank you. Well, I hope you can join us next week. We are having a uh, very special guest on too, another uh, dietitian and nutrition nutritionist. Uh, who is also vegan, and I think you will enjoy her input as well. Join us every week, every Thursday. We will be here uh, talking to special guests and talking about the latest research in the fields of health, nutrition, and fitness. Thanks, everyone. See you next week.